Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm starting the engine build and I've gotten a little bit done while I'm waiting on the block at the machine shop. It should be done next week. Uh, in the meantime, I've been doing a little bit of busy work. If you guys have been following the Instagram, you've seen that I put the pistons and rods together and I also got the intake built up. So I'm going to show you guys all that stuff today and I'm going to go through a couple of uh, tech tips for putting everything together correctly whenever you're building an engine. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So starting off, got the pistons together. As you can see right here, I got them all put together in the piston box and I got some cellophane over the top of this stuff because the garage gets kind of nasty and there's a lot of dust in the air. People are out cutting their grass. Inherently, you have a bunch of dust and debris, so you don't want that stuff on your part. So I keep all this stuff clean and I keep it covered up and I'll probably spray it off with air again before it goes in the engine. So anyways, uh, you guys already know I had I have the Monar Power Adder HP rods, and then you guys seen in some earlier videos I went with the Diamond Mod 2K pistons, and you see right here on the skirt it says Diamond Race Series. Uh, these things have a really thick pin. I don't know the size of it off the top of my head, but it's it's a really thick, heavy tool steel pin. Should handle plenty of power and RPM. And then obviously up top we've got valve release for the trick flow heads. So the nice thing about the trick flow heads it, that's going to be different from the PI heads is the placement of the intake valve. So on a PI head you your exhaust valve and your intake valve release would be down here but the intake valves moved on the trick flow head so your relief is up here instead. So I've talked about this in previous videos. Um, I'm going to talk about it again. Because so a couple of things that I want to talk about is orienting your pistons the right way in the block. So Obviously these pistons can go in a number of different ways and there's only one correct way. So what I like to do is I like to get all the pistons laid out on the table and I actually had to get the heads and figure out the orientation of these pistons because obviously these diamond pistons don't have like an arrow stamped on them that says this side towards the front of the engine. So you got to kind of do some, do some investigating and figure out the right way put these in. Well anyways what I did is I got the heads out and I looked at the combustion chamber on the heads and I figured out how this piston is oriented uh, to the combustion chamber of the head and so I oriented all my pistons based off the left and right side of the engine. So when I talk about left and right side of the engine the right side of the engine would be the passenger side of the engine and the left side of the engine would be the driver's side of the engine. So if you're looking at the engine from the front, you're going to reverse your sides. So your left side would be the right side of the engine and your right side would be the left side of the engine. And if you were looking at the engine from the driver's perspective, from behind the engine, then obviously, you know, your left is your left side and your right is your right side. So got these things oriented and obviously when I oriented them to make them easier for installation, I went ahead and got a Sharpie and I wrote right side of the engine and an arrow so I know that when I install this piston it needs to be facing that arrow needs to be going towards the front of the engine so as you can see I did that on both of these and obviously you have the left side of the engine and you have the arrow pointing to the front of the engine so the next thing that you have to do once you get your pistons oriented is you have to orient your rods so there is a specific way that the rod needs to be on the piston right and the reason why is because the rod down here on the bottom has a chamfered side of the rod and it has a flat side. So you can see this side's flat, right? And this side has a chamfer on it. Now that chamfer is to clear the, clear the crankshaft. So this chamfered side of the rod always needs to be, the face of this chamfer side needs to be facing the crankshaft. And I'll get the crankshaft out and I'll show you guys what I mean. I'm over here at the crankshaft and it's in the plastic, but that doesn't really matter. All I really need to show you guys is the journal, the rod journal of the crankshaft. So obviously this is the front rod journal of the crankshaft. And remember the chamfered side of the rod that I showed you guys, that chamfered side of the rod needs to face the crankshaft. It needs to face this portion of the crankshaft. So your chamfered side of the two rods that would be on this journal here, here would face the crankshaft. And obviously the flat sides of the rod would face each other in the middle. Now the way that you figure out how to orient 
the rod to the piston, the way I did it is I have a spare block here. So I went over to my spare block. And I'm sure this is confusing the hell out of some of you guys, and I apologize, but this is how I do it. So I've got this spare block here, right? And what I do is I came over to this spare block, and I looked at it, and I, and I seen that. If you look on the right side of the block here, the right bank, the pistons on the right bank are a little bit farther forward than the pistons on the left bank. So what that tells me is, is that all the pistons on the right bank the rods are going to be on the front side of each journal of the crankshaft and therefore the rods for the pistons on the left or the yep the left side of the block the rod is going to be the rod for those four pistons is going to be on the back side of each crank journal therefore when I'm back over here building when I'm back over here building my rods and pistons assemblies up I can look at my left side and I know I've already got my arrow on here, so that portion is going to face the front of the engine. I know which way to orient my rod, so the chamfered side would be towards the back of this piston, and then it would be the opposite on the right side of the engine. Obviously, the chamfered side would be on the forward portion of that piston, so it's going to be the opposite side for opposite for each side of the engine. So that's how you build those up. And it's a lot easier to, to show you in person than it is to explain it. I'm sure a lot of you are lost. That's the best way I know how to explain it. Having this stuff here in front of you in person, it makes it a lot easier to understand. So moving on from there, moving on, I've got the bearings inside of the rods already ready to rock. These are King HP series rod bearings. They're narrowed. Narrowed meaning they're not as wide as the actual surface of the rod right here, the journal of the rod and i don't have one out to show you guys but there is an upper and a lower shell so when you look on the back side of these bearings the upper side would go on the upper side of the rod and the lower which would be denounced by an l on the back side of this bearing would go on the lower side of the rod and then when you put the rod back together obviously both of obviously both of these would go together on this side of the rod i'm having a brain fart and i can't remember the name of these right now but both of those go on the same side if you were to put that stuff in wrong whenever you put this rod back together the bearing wouldn't be lined up like it is right here so that's kind of a quick down and dirty on how you put this stuff together you can go online and research it um, that's how I do it um, obviously you put the pins in and then there's a locking ring that goes in right here and it locks into a receiver groove on the inside of the piston right there and it's kind of a pain to get in you just take some uh, take some trial and error to get it in there so rods and pistons are together and ready to go so I'll show you guys the heads next I got one of the heads laid out here on the table and I want to show you guys a couple of things on this head as I already went ahead and put the cam shaft in it put the cam gears on got everything torqued down um, I want to talk about a couple of things so the trick flow heads are a little uh, different um, you Basically, you just flip-flop the head. So one side of the head would be a passenger side, or one head would be a passenger head, and one head would be a driver head, and they're just flip-flopped. And you plug a port on the ends. So obviously, I've already labeled this head the passenger side head. So it being the passenger side head, it would be the right side of the engine. So I went and got my cams, my custom cams out, and I found on my cam right here where it says right. So I know that this camshaft needs to go on the right head so I installed that got these caps torqued down to spec and then I went and got my comp cams adjustable cam gears as you can see right here on the front you're just matching everything up and uh, once again the passenger side head is the right head so I found my comp part number right here and it's R and that's the right side got that torqued up on here with the ARP bolt so she's all ready to rock and you guys can see right here the adjustment uh, advanced six degrees or retard six degrees and this is for whenever I go to degree the cams in which I'll show you guys whenever we get the block back and start getting this thing put back together and uh, it's the same thing for the other side the 
left cam would go in the driver's side head and then the left cam gear would go on there. So that's it for the heads. There's really, that's really all there is to it. Obviously I put some assembly lube on the cam journals here and you can see how smoothly this cam camshaft turns. It's really nice to have nice new parts. I really don't know what that's like because I've worked with the stock used parts for so long. So it's, it's honestly satisfying just to sit here and spin this cam. <laughs> All right guys, so last but not least, I've got the intake here built up on the table. This was just more of another uh, busy work thing that I went ahead and got put together. So once I get the block here, I don't have to waste time getting all this stuff put together. It's already done. And when the engine's in the car, this thing can just get slapped, slapped down on the engine. But obviously we'll sit here, right, we'll talk a little bit about this intake for the guys that don't know. So obviously it's the Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake. You can see it'll brought fuel rails for it. Went ahead and put the Holly 160 pound injectors in. And I want to talk a little bit about these injectors real quick. So these injectors, so I had these injectors flowed and cleaned. I feel like it's good insurance. And I'm going to show you guys why. I sent these, in, I sent these injectors off to Nicholas Shortridge at Boosted Injection, Injection Services, as you can see right here. Um, I like to have this done every year just because I feel like it's good insurance to know that the injectors are clean and that I'm not going to have any issues when I go to start this thing up after it's sitting for the whole, win the whole winter and even longer at this point in time with this build. So, But I had some issues when I sent these things to Nicholas and I want to show you guys this is why it's so important to clean your injectors because you never know what kind of trash is going to be in your fuel system that's going to get in into these things and clog them up and you might have one injector that's flowing 160 pounds per hour and you might have another injector that's only flowing a thousand pounds per hour and you're going to have some issues because this cylinder is obviously going to be leaner than this cylinder is which isn't good so as you can see right here we had some big issues with these injectors you can see the before flow rates we had an injector that was down to 288 cc's and nick was able to clean these things up and get them flowing all 1600 by the end of it. I let Sergio borrow these things and I think maybe he had a little bit of trash in his fuel system and I could have even had some trash in my fuel system last year and didn't know it. So these things were clogged up pretty bad so it was definitely a good a good thing that I sent these off and got them clean because that could have been a, a big issue with the new engine. Don't want to don't have that stuff going on with a brand new expensive engine and tearing it up. It just wouldn't be good. So make sure you have your injectors floating and clean, uh, especially if you sus suspect that there's been some trash in your fuel system. All right, so moving on. Obviously, got this airport over here. I remote mount my map sensor because you don't want to put the map sensor directly on these. On the engine, vibration can kill it. So I got this little deal right here. Edelbrock elbow up here. Got the AccuFab 90 millimeter throttle body. Got this adapter up here for the 3.5 inch intercooler piping obviously we got the one inch spacer right here and that's really all there is to this intake back here we got the port for coolant port and then an intake air temperature sensor and that's really all there is to this thing it's ready to bolt on and go so that's all I've gotten done so far on the engine build the block is at another machine shop I'm getting the bores opened up to the correct piston to wall clearance and I'm getting the main journals aligned on with ARP studs. That thing, the block should be done next week. I feel like I keep telling you guys, hey, the block's gonna be done at this point in time. The block's gonna be done. The block's gonna be done next week. And then a month later, it's like, hey guys, I still don't have the block. This time, hopefully, I'm gonna have the block back and I'm gonna be able to start assembling this thing. So when it gets back, I'm gonna get hopping on that. You guys stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later.